Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the off-season edition of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. This recorded on May 1st, 2022, on 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot of things to jump into, so heading straight to the satellite imagery for today. First of all, we noticed that it is pretty quiet for the month of May. We are just now 15 days away from the start of the East Pacific hurricane season and a month away from the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season start. So that is some interesting news to say the least. So all of you tropical fans can now rejoice. We are very close to hurricane season, um, but it's pretty quiet right now, which is certainly some good news. <clears throat> Quickly taking a look here at the watch warning map across the contiguous United States. Not many, not much concerns today. A few winter storm warnings out across the UP of Michigan. Elsewise, it is pretty quiet, which is good news. Looking at the sea surface temperature anomaly map, this updated as of yesterday. We noticed that in the East Pacific Basin, we do have very, very warm water temperature anomalies. Right off the coast of South America, this is about 3 to 4 C above the long-term average. And what this basically means to me is that with the developing El Nino that is likely going to occur out in this vicinity, which is now warming up to just about El Nino thresholds, this could be a strong El Nino heading into this winter. It seems very evident right now. And there is some correlation between these very warm water temperature anomalies out here off the coast of South America and what could potentially be translating to a stronger El Nino by the time we get into winter and into the beginning of next year. There's kind of a long-standing history of when we have water temperatures this warm or temperature anomalies this warm off the coast of South America, in this case, again, 3 to 4 C above the long-term average, and combine that with the developing El Nino, it tends to be strong. And that's been a long-standing thing all the way back to the 1800s. Uh, don't exactly quote me on that, but just based on some of the, the research I've been doing, this seems to be a correlation all the way back to the 1800s. Not saying that we're going to have a strong El Nino, but there is some correlation and causation here. So it seems like we're heading into that strong El Nino territory, but it's going to take a little bit for the atmosphere to respond to that. One of the other hindering factors is this cooler water off the coast of California and spreading into and just to the northeast of Hawaii. We notice that these cooler temperature anomalies here, in some cases, about 2 degrees C below average off the coast of California and up all the way to uh, really into Canada. Uh, but this is actually what's known as a negative PDO, Pacific Decadal Oscillation. Very similar to, if you remember how we talk about the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation being positive or negative, this is the same thing here. In this case, this happens on the Pacific Ocean. And we get these cooler water temperatures originating from Alaska and Siberia and moving southward. And so this might help to counteract a little bit of that warming in the MDR of the East Pacific, which is roughly this area out and through here. That's where East Pacific development tends to be focused. And so with water temperatures a little cooler out here, it might help to hinder the developing El Nino and reduce and suppress a little bit of the tropical cyclone activity in the Eastern Pacific, at least for a temporary period of time. So we'll be watching this very closely. Now, conversely, in the Atlantic Basin, we have something very interesting beginning to happen. We just talked about the uh, AMO and PDO. Well, this is very similar here. We're talking about the AMO here. So this is the uh, Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation, and it's very strongly positive, and it's a phase one, meaning, to break it down in simple terms, phase one of the AMO simply states we have very warm waters originating up in the Canary Current, moving southward and into the main development region of the tropical Atlantic. In this case, water temperatures are 2 to almost 3 degrees C above the long-term average. Very strongly suggests a what would be a otherwise very, very active, almost hyperactive um, signal for a hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin. Uh, but the tempering factor here is this El Nino that is going to be developing in the Atlantic or in the Pacific Ocean. So if this does end up happening where we do end up with a relatively strong El Nino, I think what's going to happen is we're going to see a busy start to the 2023 Atlantic hurricane season. And then I think by August into really, really from August and, and beyond that point, 
I think activity is going to be confined to homegrown activity in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the Western and Northwestern Caribbean, and out there in the subtropical uh, waters. Uh, but this would otherwise strongly suggest a very hyperactive hurricane season. But given El Nino, probably won't happen. Uh, but interesting nonetheless. And that, if this holds together into the start of the hurricane season, and certainly through at least early August, we could be dealing with some problems if the El Nino does not rapidly take off. Now, something else that's interesting here, this is the CAN-SIPS forecast. So this is a climate forecast model. We're looking at the total um, accumulated precipitation anomalies. So this goes through June, July, and August. This was last month's forecast valid through the 31st of March. Okay, so this is last month's forecast that was put together in early March. Okay, so the beginning of March, this is what came out for June, July, and August. Now, we notice that, again, this is when our busiest part of the hurricane season is going to be this year, in my opinion. And we notice how it was almost bone dry with maybe some activity out here in the subtropics. Now, are you ready for today's forecast? This was today's May 1st forecast for the same time period. Boom. Okay. So June, July, August, and we just notice how there is increased uh, precipitation anomalies in the main development region and the Bahamas and just off the southeast U.S. coast into the subtropics. And we also notice that it's not as dry in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean. So this paints at least a little bit of a concerning picture that, hey, we may have a somewhat relatively more active start than in recent years and combine that with the fact that this is probably the season is all probably going to be front loaded meaning you know if once we hit like august activity is probably going to be shut down for the remainder of the season so this is an interesting picture and it does paint maybe the possibility for you know some you know systems to make their way you know to the bahamas the caribbean gulf of mexico the southeast u.s coast so this is just something to kind of keep in mind Again, this doesn't explicitly indicate tracks, but this does show an increased amount of precipitation. So the potential for more tropical cyclones to be in this area come June, June July, and August. Okay, so just something to monitor. Now, in terms of the confidence forecast for the El Nino and other events here, so we're looking at confidence for El Nino, and we'll get to the, all the other ones here in a second. There's pretty high confidence. I'd almost go to say very high confidence at this point, but generally speaking, 80 to 90% sure that we're going to have an El Nino for this upcoming hurricane season. I don't really think that's going to be much of any doubt at this point. We're going to, it seems like we're going to be in that. Now, if you're talking about under 15 named storms in the Atlantic Basin, that's also a relatively high confidence forecast. I don't think we're going to see any more than 15. I think my forecast explicitly calls for about 12 named storms. Between 12 to 14, I, I think, is the range that we're kind of being in. But I think it's a pretty good bet that we'll see under 15 named storms this year for the entire uh, Atlantic Basin. And then I do think there is a moderate confidence between 40 to 50% chance that we could be dealing with the United States landfall. Again, this was... Um, you know, created a couple of weeks ago, but I think this general forecast reasoning stands. And again, low confidence of a significant U.S. event, meaning Category 3 or higher event. Um, you, those are very hard to really forecast with any for sure confidence. So I would say there is at least somewhat of a moderate confidence that we're going to be dealing with the landfall. And right now, a low probability of a significant U.S. event. But in terms of the impact chances, this means that any impact to the area, so any impact, rain, wind, surge, whatever, we're kind of just lumping it in here and we're saying, okay, what is the impact chance? Well, generally for the Caribbean and really for most of the Southeast U.S., we're dealing, generally speaking, with a moderate confidence risk here. So generally about 40 to 50% off the southeast coast from the east coast of Florida through the southeast uh, portion of Georgia and South Carolina and extreme southern 
portions there of North Carolina. I think the storm tracks again will generally be somewhat in this area and probably somewhat through here. Pretty low threat for any significant activity out here and any impact chance, especially at across the Northeast. The Northeast does have always some risk. It is coastal and well, we've had hurricanes that have hit there before, but this year I just don't really see any appreciable threat. Uh, Bermuda, 40% chance of any impact from a tropical cyclone. And the Gulf of Mexico, which is usually our higher end areas, generally speaking, 80% on the eastern part. So we're talking from about near New Orleans down through Key West, Florida, about an 80% chance of seeing some tropical cyclone impact. And then once you start getting west of New Orleans, you start getting into western Louisiana, down into Texas, and then portions of the Bay of Campeche, you're dealing with about a 70% chance. So still a pretty high uh, risk there for seeing some type of tropical cyclone impact. And then also down here in the Southern Caribbean, down towards uh, places down there in like Nicaragua, etc. I think your chances of seeing tropical cyclones this year, probably about a 40% chance of any impact within that region. So generally speaking, this is a low kind of a low pushing moderate end confidence on this particular forecast again there's not a whole lot of explicit science that goes into i mean there is science that goes into this but this is more so an educated guess based on what the science says so it's kind of like your best guess forecast and again anyone that claims to have any degree of of accuracy with predicting oh this place is gonna get hit and this that whatever it's nonsense. This is more so of a best guess because the science is not there to say, oh, well, I know for sure that a hurricane is going to hit, you know, Havana, Cuba, you know, seven months out. It's, it's bogus. But I do want to say that there is a low to mid-range confidence here that we are going to see some type of impact, especially out there in the Gulf of Mexico. And I think that just goes for any year, really, because you get cyclones that form in the gulf and they can't really go much where other than hitting land so <laughs> that area is pretty much always high but generally speaking elsewise this is the forecast and I, I think right now it is again a pretty decent forecast for the time range that we're looking at right now so uh, but elsewise again just have your hurricane preparedness plans ready it's never too late or never too early to start preparing do not wait till the last minute we see how that has panned out for other people in the past and it does not end well so please make sure you have your hurricane preparedness plans ready it only takes one storm and with that being said i do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening of course i am michael romali god bless take care and i'll talk to you guys again some more later